I would like to now welcome back to the stage a face we haven't seen for a while, one of our original founding fellows, uh, Casey Krull, who has been off sailing the high seas on tall ships. Casey is going to tell us a story of cartographic errors and hoaxes, and she's going to ask us if, she know, if we know the way to high Brazil. Please welcome Casey. Hi, y'all. It's so good to be back. It's so good to be back and see so many new faces. Uh, cool. So we're going to talk about High Brazil. And I want to start this with a little thought exercise that I've shamelessly lifted from this awesome book. Uh, this is called On the Map. This is a book by Simon Garfield. And it's a book all about maps and how we look at the world and how those things are really inter, like interrelated. So he starts the book by asking you to imagine your bedroom and to draw that bedroom. Now, it's pretty easy for most of us. We spend a lot of time in that space. Uh, and then he asks you to imagine and draw the bedroom of a friend. Now, that's a little trickier, right? Are things going to be in the right place? Are things going to be in proportion? Is that going to be accurate? Is it going to be accurate in 10 years? So I'd like everyone right now to imagine the last town or city that you visited that you don't really spend time in regularly. And I want you to imagine what that place looks like and what it would look like if you drew it on a chart or a map. So I attempted to draw Angel Island, which is a place that I literally sail around like three times a week for work. <laughs> And results were mixed, right? <laughs> I added some details for you guys. Uh, I don't think that I need to embarrass myself by showing you an actual map of what Angel Island looks like. <laughs> but as you might guess, mine isn't totally accurate. Uh, except for the dock with sea lion poop, that is totally accurate and it's disgusting. <laughs> so gross. Oh. So I'm clearly pretty bad at this, right? But Angelino Dulcer was not. Uh, this guy was an early Italian cartographer, and he's significant because of a couple early charts that he made. Uh, he was really into these portalon charts, which are based around compass bearings. So the idea is that if you take your ship's compass and take a bearing, ships, of course, and uh, so you like, take your compass, take a bearing on a known point, and then match it up with one of the bearing lines on these charts, you have a pretty good idea of what's ahead of you. Uh, it's pretty rudimentary. It doesn't really work for like ocean crossings, but it's actually pretty accurate for like coastwise navigation. So like follow a line, follow a bearing, keep that bearing, and at the end of it, there will be a port or an anchorage or maybe an obstacle that you want to avoid and not hit like rule number one with boats is don't hit anything. <laughs> so this chart up here is significant because it's the first time that we see this little island called High Brazil. So let's all say hi Brazil. hi, Brazil. It's like way up in the corner there. You can barely see it, but trust me, it's there. Now, this is not the big Brazil that we know today. Different, totally different thing, right? So... High Brazil is styled in a couple different ways on these early charts, but they're all talking about the same basic place. And uh, this island starts to pop up a lot in the work of early cartographers. And uh, in Celtic fol bleh, folklore, Brazil is the high king of the world. So it's kind of a big lofty name for this tiny, tiny little island. Now, at this point, I'd like to point out that cartography is a science, and it's also an art. But it's also collaborative, right? Like you're building these charts off of what you know, what you observe, uh, you know, bearings and celestial movements on some charts, all this like real hard science, right? But a good chunk of this intel is also coming from people like me at this point, sailors, navigators, explorers. And these charts are built on what we're actually seeing out there. Now, there are a couple problems with this. Sailors like to embellish things. Ask me how I know. Uh, also, looks can be deceiving, especially when you're out there on the open ocean. So this is an image, this is a series of photos of the Farallon Islands, which are you know right outside the Golden Gate. And 
this is kind of taken over the period of a day, right? What this effect is called, it's a kind of cool name, it's called Fata Morgana. And it happens all the time. Like I've experienced this sailing out with like big cargo ships that kind of look like they're split in two in the distance, right? Now this illusion, this, this mirage, might offer a scientific explanation of why High Brazil kind of shows up in the first place, right? It might not have even been an island, but maybe a small rock whose image was distorted by this mirage effect. And there's actually a big shoal, a big underwater kind of rock formation near where uh, High Brazil kind of pops up, and that's called Porcupine Bank. So there's a theory that at one time, a part of that bank might have been kind of poking out of the water a little bit, and that might have been enough to make it look like it was an island, right? So the point that I'm trying to make is not I, the fact that High Brazil shows up on these charts in the first place isn't in of itself indicative of a hoax or anyone trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. Uh, but people's descriptions of actually visiting this island is where it starts to get a little fishy. So John Cabot, Venetian navigator, uh, he led a, a 1497 expedition where him and his men stumbled across a little continent known as North America. Uh, this was significant because he was the first European to make landfall here uh, since like the Vikings in their longboats, right? So on this trip, he reportedly observed a little circular island off of Ireland. In a letter describing Cabot's expedition, the Spanish envoy to Scotland, who was uh, Pedro de Ayala at that point, writes that said land, that land that he observed, had already been discovered in the past by men from Bristol who had found High Brazil. So Cabot's sighting of High Brazil kind of ends up being this footnote in the bigger story of him making landfall in North America. But there's a more elaborate account of someone making it to High Brazil, and this is Captain John Nesbitt. So according to Nesbitt, he went to this place and found rabbits. Cute little fluffy bunnies, but they were really big rabbits. They were huge rabbits, uh, and there was also a wizard. <laughs> so usually, when people are like trying to pull off some hoax, they're motivated motivated by some sort of gain. But I don't really know what Nesbit was trying to gain other than like looking like a madman and. Unfortunately, this was all just a big yarn that he spun. The whole wizard on Rabbit Island thing was actually kind of a short story invention by the Irish author Richard Head. I know, it's just a, a tiny little, little teeth and everything, it's adorable. So High Brazil was last sighted in 1872 by this guy T.J. Westrup. He was an archeologist, folklorist, and uh, he'd already been to the island twice, according to him. And on this third expedition, he brought a shipload, anyone, there we go, of witnesses, including his mother, which just sounds like a nice little cruise, right? A little family bonding experience. And, uh, and these people were there to verify that, you know, we were seeing this thing. So they did see it, according to them. And what they say is that it appeared and then disappeared, never to be seen again. Now, in the lore of High Brazil, this island supposedly only shows up once every seven years. <laughs> so, while the purported ex existence of this magical disappearing island might be kind of a hoax, by itself, Little High Brazil actually manages to get wrapped up in another totally crazy tinfoil hat conspiracy level theory hoax that happened pretty recently. So we're going to fast forward to 1980, and this is the Rendlesham Forest incident. So this is in December 1980, and it's described as UK's Roswell event. And it took place at what at the time was the Woodbridge Royal Air Force uh, Base. And this guy, Jim Penniston, who's a sergeant, claims that he came into contact with a triangular spaceship that landed in the forest. And when he touched it, he was hit by this mass of binary code that went into his brain and, you know, it was like getting hit by a wave. 
eh, I'm not going to give this to science. I'm not going to give that there. So when he translated it, it generated all these coordinates for ancient sites, uh, including pyramids in Egypt, temples in Greece, and good old high Brazil. So these are the coordinates for high Brazil, if you believe a guy who touched a spaceship. And when you plug them into Google Maps, here's where it shows up. And I'm looking at this and I, I see, I see something, something else here. God, what? It's like a rabbit. It's a giant rabbit. It was the giant rabbit all along. No, this is totally, totally not a real thing. Uh, but just putting it out there. So the last time that High Brazil was sighted was 1872. And if it only appears every seven years, that puts us on schedule to catch it in 2019. I'm just saying, I've got a valid captain's license if someone wants to hire a boat and go sailing, right? Yeah, boat trip, it's gonna be a boat trip. It'll be great, crossing the Atlantic is so easy, you guys. So maybe we can all go sailing together, we can go plug in these coordinates, go out to the banks of Ireland and see what we find on high Brazil. And we can do our part to keep this hoax going another couple hundred years. So I'd like to raise a toast to all of the weird stuff that you see when you're out sailing on the ocean. And if you would like to hear of some of these weird things that I didn't have time for in this talk, please find me at the bar. <laughs>